Hey guys, well it's a beautiful Saturday and I've got far enough along on this car rebuild that I'm ready to get it running again and get it out. So still got to do the front and rear glass but I want to get it out in the sun and work on a few little things out there where I've got more light. It seems like no matter how much light you have in the shop, the inside of a car and the under the hood of a car the darkest place ever so i'm tired of working on it in here i don't mind working in the shop <clears throat> i'd rather work outside if i could so we're going to get this thing going and uh i've got to put some gas in it and uh check the oil check the water i've already checked the battery put the charger on the battery but the battery didn't really need a charge it was still good it's fine this car uses no oil. Got a bag blowing around there for some reason. I don't think this thing's been running since October. Looks good. Something like that when I moved it in here. And, uh, This car has been totally apart. The gas tank's been out of it. The dash has been out of it. The interior's been out of it. So everything but the exterior has been out of this car. So I want to make sure I hooked the battery back up, made sure it didn't have any problems there. So looks good. It does turn over. This has got points ignition in it. So I haven't touched the points. I haven't done anything. I'm not going to uh, do anything. I'm not going to prime it. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to up with gas. I'm going to tap the carburetor a little bit make sure the float's not stuck. I hope it's not. Never has. And all that. So this is a part of this video where I'm going to talk about something totally unrelated. And this is the part where these people that hate you talking about unrelated things gripe and complain. But I've had bluebirds nest in this building up there where those little leaves are. They always nest here and that one on that corner over there because the prevailing wind comes this way normally it's coming this way it's coming kind of sort of this direction but a lot of times that's where it comes from so they don't ever really nest up there they haven't so these poor little things were up there trying to make a nest and trying to cohabitate with me in and out here all the time and i guess they weren't awful happy about it but they they did it but i thought well i'm going to put up some boxes so i put up one two three four boxes out in the front yard and after about two three days they promptly moved <laughs> so anyway so this is my gas my fueling dock here you might call it for this car and the other car I have to do the same thing because i don't have a funnel that curves and stays curved right there it's just a straight funnel with some heater hose on the end of it stuck down in there and with a lawnmower holding it up because this thing you can't hardly pour gas in it with it like that. So, anyway, put y'all in a stand of Maruski here. Pour a little gas in it. I bet I'm going to spill some because I filled this gas tank up as far as I could fill it because I had to have gas for something else I'm going to do too. So, I'm going to do also. I'll try it. Make sure you're not leaking gas out, out of where it's not supposed to.
All right, that's about three gallons in there. So you know what? Put a bit out of this. I'll let that sit for just a few minutes and make sure we're gas tight. Tight. I have to use this for the Chrysler also because the one on the Chrysler is behind the bumper, it's straight out, and you have to turn it like this to get gas in it or you're out, you know. I'm going to show you something here too. Try to make these videos a little bit more detailed and involved. I know sometimes I just want to push through stuff. But. This gas. This is this ethanol gas. And you see how I just spilled that, what, a minute ago? A minute and a half ago? Two minutes? You see how quickly it's already evaporating off the concrete? If this was the actual stuff, it didn't have corn alcohol in it then it wouldn't do that you'd have plenty of time to cause a big fire with it so I don't know maybe maybe this is a government plot to save ourselves from our own stupidity I don't know <laughs> so, move this out I had to I had to move my plants inside last night and cover all the rest of them that I already planted them because guess what? I have a frost advisory last night and tonight. I'm supposed to be down to Ooh boy it smells like gas. I'm supposed to be down to 34 degrees both nights. And I'll say this, you know, I'm critical a lot of the time about stuff that happens here doesn't happen here in this part of the country but I will say I'm thankful that one one benefit for living out here in the boonies I can clean the garage again for the umpteenth time one thing about living out here in the boonies is it kind of saved us from the worst of this virus stuff going around but Talking about the weather, if you want to be entertained by the weather, you need to live here because this weather does everything weather can do. We get hot, cold, too hot, too cold, windy, not windy, tornadoes, hurricanes. The only thing I haven't seen around here so far is the dust devil. Well, all right, I hear a train coming, and that thing is going to interfere with the video quality as it is, so I'm going to set up the tripod up here. Do a few little random checks here, drink a little bit of tea, and we'll come back out and turn the key on this thing. Okay, you know what time it is? It's Plymouth time. So, everything looks okay so far. I have a little bit of plan B going here. Hopefully I don't need that. So. <clears throat> So again, this is going to be a dry start, so this will probably be another Chrysler starter workout, but that's okay. There's probably no fuel in the lines. I don't do the priming thing. I'm just never, you know, that's, to me, that's cheating. I get on our peak because our peak's always fouling out plugs and having to do this and having to do that. And I remind him that I take to take care to keep my cars tuned up so shouldn't have to do any of those shenanigans so well anyway we'll see what happens something goes wrong in here you guys hard in it okay Suck it up.
you hear the transmission pump kick in, I got it in neutral. If these have been sitting for a while, you always want to start them in neutral because the pump doesn't pump in park. So if you start in park, you're doing the dry start on the transmission too. It's kind of hard on it. Well, that was not too dramatic, thankfully. But I'll let you in on a secret. This car either needs a valve adjustment or something else is going on with it with the uh, cylinder balance on it because I noticed when I was starting it, spinning it over, you notice how it would go. That's a telltale sign that you got a valve that's too tight or something else is going on with it. Um, and it's kind of sputtering a little bit back here when it idles so hopefully we don't have anything major going on you know you could have like a valve starting to burn or some valve seat going away or something i hope it's not that serious because it straightens up after you you know sitting here at fast idle is not really doing it so uh we'll look into that probably just got a valve needs to just probably need to run the valves again so we'll get into that anyway uh happy with that so I'll let this run a little bit and warm up and just kind of watch it and then we'll get it out of here. go so right, I'm gonna let it just run a while and uh, I think I'll have some lunch but she sounds pretty good we'll give her a valve adjustment here soon thanks for watching guys see you on the next well one thing tends to happen when you get older you young guys is that you get a little forgetful and that's happened to me some I still know who I am and where I'm at, so I guess that's good. <clears throat> but what's not good is that <laughs> when I put this door together, I 
ran this cable for the, the control for the rear view mirror there. It's got a remote rear view mirror. Ran it through there and didn't even think anything more about it. Put all this together and then I'm one day I'm trying to put this thing on, tighten it down, put the ferrule on it and all that, which are these two pieces here. <laughs> and so I'm <clears throat> putting this thing on, you know, and I'm trying to get it on there and put the nut on it. This thing, you wouldn't believe how much they ask for these if you find a good one. Which I didn't pay that, I just cleaned up the old one, you know, it's a pity a little bit. So I'm trying to put all this stuff together. <clears throat> finally occurs to me that <laughs> this washer is supposed to be on the inside of the door not the outside there's nothing to hold it if it's on the outside it just comes out so it has to be here and then that part goes through it and then the nut tightens down okay so if you're doing all these remember that I didn't so now I have to take all this off again put that back on but that's not all of it uh, I'll show more about this later on but I took all this I took this whole entire dash out of this car and painted it looks real nice I still have to get my dash cover put on but one thing I had to do also is paint the steering column which I did not take it out and paint it I just left it in there it's too hard to get out so in doing that, I am covered everything, but then I forgot to cover this door up. So now there's specks all over it. I should have watched one of Howard's videos, Old Car Alley, before I did this. Because Howard covers everything over. Everything. And so if I had watched that video, it would make me remember to do that. Because the thing is, when I was taking this all out, the first time I had everything covered up. Because I didn't want to hit the door. Right? Well, I forgot. So, right, well, I have to take the door panel off and I'll have to not only take it off to do that, now I've got to take it off anyway to fix it. So it can't have specs on it like that. All right, well, that's my duh moment for the time, I guess.